Hi, my name is Cindy Pope and I'm here at the Cool Tools Studio to show you how to do some faux two layer earrings. Okay, here are the tools we're going to use for this project. We're going to have distilled water and olive oil, a tile to work on, a ball burr and a six millimeter stone setting burr. We always need a roller to roll out our clay. I have a brush to brush off any dust from sanding. I also like this tropical shine brush. I'm going to take down the sides of this piece and this is really good. Sanding sponges are also helpful. Tweezers for adding little delicate parts. Pencil, and this is a five millimeter a precision hole punch. I need a scalpel. I like this little Princeton brush. It's my favorite brush. I can't do without it. Um, we're gonna be adding oil and I use a little toothbrush. I love these disposable applicators for joining things together. We're gonna use um, the number two, the B, stencil to create our piece and you can pick any texture. I love this swirly hearts one. It's got so many different options of what texture you can use. We need rolling frames. I'm using cypress clay and I'm using spoons to dry the forms. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to start working on the, these earrings. And the first thing we want to do is oil all the surfaces we're going to be working with. We don't want the clay to stick to them. So I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm using the smallest um, template piece because we're going to be making earrings. You always want to oil your texture. And with this one, you know, earrings do not have to be exactly the same. With this one, you could actually do two different patterns on them. That's very um, in right now, kind of different pattern type earrings. And then you always want to do the surface. We're going to be picking, after we roll, we'll be picking up off the surface and putting onto the tile. Want a little bit on the tile too. I do them all first because sometimes I forget and then if the clay sticks to the template, it's a problem. So in this case, we're going to start with 10 cards and then we're going to roll down to four to create our two layers. Um, I keep my um, Cypress clay in saran wrap in the original container. You can also use the, hyd the hydrating hydrator. And I'm going to condition it just a tiny bit first, although it stays pretty long in a very smooth form. I've taken it out of the package a couple days afterwards and it doesn't really need much conditioning. So when you're going as thick as 10 cards, you want to make sure the ball you're starting with is pretty high because you want to roll down any different um, bends in the bottom of the clay. And the best way to do that is to start big. I like to turn in between. And see there was a, a bend there, but it's gone. Now our texture actually fits in these rolling frames, so it's really nice um, if you find that uh, this is gonna fit um, right within these two frames. So we're gonna go down to four, and we're gonna start by finding where we want this earring, what texture we want it to be. And I, and I really, really like this texture, so we're gonna go ahead and use this one. I'm gonna put the clay on top of it. This is much more clay than I really need. Then I'm gonna put the four card on top. And as long as it fits on top, we're gonna to be able to roll just fine. I'm gonna roll down, backwards and forwards. And then I'm gonna push down to make sure that really cool swirl in the middle is recognizable. At this point, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to look and make sure I like the way it looks. If I do, we're going to turn it onto a tile. And we're going to use a scalpel to cut it out. In this case, I don't want, I'm going to be sanding it down a little bit, so I'm going to actually cut it without the template. We're just going to
because there'll be quite a bit of sanding. Because this is an earring, I do not want it to be very, very heavy. So the way I'm achieving that is I'm taking the edges down because that's where the most clay is. And what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna put it on the heating surface on top of a spoon. Spoons are a lovely curve. You want two spoons that are exactly the same and you wanna put the um, piece in the same place. Otherwise they won't have the exact same curve. And you wanna push it down a little bit in the edges. And as it dries, you're gonna go back and you're gonna make sure it's not coming up because as it dries, it'll wanna come up. So I come back every couple minutes and just push the edges down. If you want it to dry quicker, you can put a little glass or um, stainless steel bowl over it, and that creates a little oven to dry this quicker. But be sure to keep coming back and kind of babysitting it. So let's go ahead and go on to the next step. Okay, our piece is completely dry, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to weigh it. And when I weigh it, I wanna make sure um, the total weight of my earrings is about three and a half grams four at the max. So this is at 4.4, so I'm gonna do some sanding and take it down. I also wanna compare the two earrings at the end to make sure they weigh the same. So let's go ahead and do some sanding and take some of that weight off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand the edges quite a bit. And um, let's start with this tool. And depending on how, how much you need to take off, this, this clay actually sands pretty nicely. Um, if you wanna take even more off, you can use the um, blue tool, or you can use some of these um, heavier sanding sponges. The super fine takes a lot off. I'm not a big fan of the mediums. I, think, I feel like it's almost a little too aggressive. You can also use your scalpel to take some off. It kind of um, depends on what you're most comfortable with. Sanding is really not the only way to remove clay. So this part is much wider, so I'm gonna actually show you how to take a bit off with the scalpel. And that's quicker than sanding. And now it's much closer to the size of the other side. But although this will take some weight off, the thickness is where I really want to get the most weight off. Um, rolling it down to four cards is necessary to create this faux um, two-layered look. But it does give you, for earrings, and many people don't mind earrings thicker, but I have a lot of students who really have this four gram weight that they talk about. So, what you can do is you can take thickness off the back and it's not gonna change the look of the piece, it's just gonna make it thinner. So I'm gonna use something called a sanding band. And this is a, a great little tool. I use it for finishing the inside of rings a lot. But on this curved piece, because I put it on the spoon, it's curved. I'm really a flat piece is gonna be hard to remove equal thickness. So I'm just going to aggressively sand a layer off. You want to be sure as you're doing this, at the very end we're going to check all the sides to make sure one side is not thicker than the other. But I, I've cut these actually without the second layer, but I really love the way the, um, the two layers look. It looks like a very complex earring when it really is pretty easy to make. Okay, so let's brush it off and see what our weight is now. Oops. We're down to four. So I'm gonna just brush a little bit more off the thickness. We'll get a little bit more off the sides. 
And everybody has a sanding tool that they use for removing, but uh, these sanding mans, I think, for, the, for a curved shape are nice and aggressive. And then you, you certainly want to smooth it out at the end. Make sure there's no sanding bits. So once I've got it down to three and a half, four, I'm going to create a little teeny tiny bale for the earrings. They swing really, really nicely. And this is kind of square at the top, so that really isn't an obvious place to put a hole, and I don't think it would move very nicely. So let me show you how I make these. And you can save all this sanding to use for um, slip or reconstituting. This clay reconstitutes nicely too. So now I've got this five millimeter um, hole punch. And we're just going to do the one earring, but you would do this with both. I'm going to put my extra clay back. And now we're going to join this and then we're going to dry it and we're going to be able to create this very delicate um, hole at the top. So we're adding wet to dry, so we have to make this part um, receptive to adding wet clay. So let me take one of the applicators. And I'll use the same one, you know, for a whole project. So although I don't wash them, I do use them more than one sitting. And I'm going to take a little bit of that sanding. And we're going to just rehydrate this top a little bit. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the pile to get it smushy at the end. And we're going to smush it down on top. And it won't look perfect at first, but we're going to sand it and refine it later. So I'm going to use a clay shaper to smooth the two bits together. Clay shapers. I like this shape of clay shaper, the angled one. I think it might be called a chisel. I feel like it, it does these kind of joining things really well. So once you've got it well joined, we're going to go ahead and dry it and then I'll show you how to drill that hole out. Okay, so our little um, circle is dried and I've reinforced it a couple times to make sure it's well joined and I'm going to sand it a little bit more. You want to sand it very flat and you want to make, make sure it's a nice round shape. These sanding sponges are great because you can get into that little corner and it doesn't have to be perfectly round, but it does have to be symmetrical. I suppose it doesn't have to be symmetrical. I like it to be symmetrical. But because you've re reinforced it twice, you know that it's going to stay on. The next thing I do is I take this little ball burr and I, supporting with my finger underneath, I'm going to drill a hole. Now, I like to start with a smaller one. This one is the one that's about one and a half millimeters. You can continually go up if you want. Um, the set that comes at Cool Tools has like every different size you can think of. I think it goes up to about six millimeters. But what I do is I start with this hole and then I use my um, stone setting burr. So it cre creates this kind of uh, curved top shape and I just like the way it looks. And plus it's also gonna make the hole bigger. And it'll make your um, ear wire move better too. And slow and steady wins the race on this guy. Don't, you know, don't move too quickly. I'm moving especially um, slowly because um, I don't have my reading glasses on so I can't see it very well. 
something that comes with age. If um, you feel like you want to, this is kind of an oval shape, if I want to widen it up, you can always take a little out with a scalpel too. It's a great detail tool. Sometimes adding sanding or adding white just doesn't get you what you want, but you can always scrape a little bit away with um, a scalpel. We're ready to fire our cypress earrings and we're going to fire them according to the instructions in the cypress package. Our earrings are polished and patinaed, but I'm going to add some silver ear wires with copper balls. This is a new product at Cool Tools that really complements cypress copper. They're really substantial ear wires too, so it's really nice weight. I hope you enjoyed the project and like these matching earrings with the pendant we made in an earlier project. Thanks again for joining me for this faux two-layer earring project. I hope you enjoy making them and using the cypress copper.